Now on 18 Eyewitness News. A police chase lands a man in jail. Also, Farmington announced their new high school principal. Plus, the March of Dimes March for Babies walk was a big success. All these stories and my latest storm tracker weather forecast coming up. 18 Eyewitness News starts right now. Coverage you can count on. This is 18 Eyewitness News. Hello everyone, I'm Dustin Cobb. Here are some of the stories that we're working on for you on 18 Eyewitness News. Thursday was a busy day for police as an officer who was dispatched out to Holly Tree Lane ended up in a high-speed chase. The officer responded to a call to check the well-being of a person in a parking lot on Holly Tree Lane. Well, when the officer arrived, they tried to get the attention of the driver. The driver then acknowledged the officer and drove off. The officer then went into pursuit. The chase spanned over several cities in San Francisco County. Spike strips were deployed and the vehicle eventually stopped. The suspect was taken into custody with the following charges pending. Stealing of a motor vehicle, driving while revoked, and resisting arrest. No name of the suspect has been released, but we do know it is a 32-year-old white male. We will continue to follow this story and bring you the latest details right here on 18 Eyewitness News and KDKZ18.com. And temperatures right now at the 6 o'clock hour are in the 50s. It's mild out there. However, it is a little chilly. 53 right now in Festus, 54 in St. Jimmy in Fredericktown, and 57 right now in Poplar Bluff. Looking ahead through the evening hours, we will be seeing plenty of clear skies. Mostly clear at 7 p.m., 49 degrees, 45 by 9, and by midnight, we're down to 41. It's going to be another chilly night with the frost advisory in effect for the overnight hours. I'll give you all the details coming up on weather here in just a little bit. The Farmington School District Board of Education has approved the hiring of Dr. Nathaniel Hostetler for the position of Farmington High School principal effective July 1st. At a press conference at the high school on Thursday, current principal Matt Rubel introduced Hostetler to teachers and staff. Hostetler tells 18 Eyewitness News what he hopes to bring to the high school and the district. One of the things that's facing every district in the state is MSIP 5. Uh, we're going to have to work hard to meet the new standards step, set forth by the state. And that's going to be the first thing that I focus on. I want to make sure that this, this high school and this district, to the best of my ability, is in good shape to meet those challenges. Uh, additionally, I want to work to build a strong connection between the middle school and the high school and make sure that the freshmen are, that are coming this direction have a strong connection with the folks uh, who are here to help them out. Dr. Hastetler is currently the high school principal at, for the Potosi School District. Before accepting the position as principal in 2009, he served the Potosi School District as assistant principal since 2006. 54-year-old David Sperry of Goose Creek has been charged with first-degree murder, first-degree arson, and armed criminal action in connection with the shooting death of 68-year-old Kenneth Vaughn of Goose Creek this past January. Sperry waived his right to a preliminary hearing on Tuesday, and his case has been passed to June 5th. Police say Sperry shot Vaughn in the head and then set his body on fire. Associate Circuit Court Judge Wendy Wexler Horn has set Sperry's bond at $1 million. The Park Hills Library is helping folks out who need to pay for fines by collecting food. Library Director Lisa Sisk tells 18 Eyewitness News how the program works. To take care of their fines instead of paying for them, they can donate a um, item, needs to be a kid-friendly item, food item like macaroni and cheese, granola bars, peanut butter, uh, canned pastas to the library. For every dollar they owe, they can donate one item. Lisa says you don't have to have fines to donate. All the donations are welcome. She also says that they have done this project in the past and it was a success. For more information, you can call Lisa or the library at 573-431-4842. And when we come back, the March of Dimes March for Babies Walk was a big success. That story next. We'll be right back. For 15 years, Heartland Furniture and Appliance has been the leader in price for restonic bedding. Whirlpool built Crossley appliances, Frigidaire appliances, sofa sets, recliners, accent furniture, and White's metal detectors. Same day delivery with no waiting. We are fast becoming this area's leader in the home furnishing and appliance business. Need a little cash? Payday loans are available in each store. We'd love to have you come see us at one of our three locations on both sides of Main Street in Piedmont, Business 60 in Dexter, and next to Current River Ford in Donovan. Heartland Furniture and Appliance, 223-3200.
How can heat also be cool? When it comes from targeted induction technology, which uses electromagnetic waves to quick heat your pan, boiling up to 40% faster, while the surface around it stays perfectly cool to the touch. It's faster, hotter, and, well, cooler. Hi, Bob Seabaugh at Seabaugh Furniture and Appliance. Come and see this and other great features and benefits that will amaze you. Now on sale at Seabaugh Furniture and Appliance in downtown Fredericktown. You're watching 18 Eyewitness News with Fred Dawkins and Chief Weathercaster Dustin Kopp. 18 Eyewitness News continues. And welcome back. The rain couldn't keep the little ones away on Thursday for this year's March of Dimes March for Babies. The event is normally held in Long Park in Farmington, but due to the rain, the event got moved to St. Joseph Catholic School Gym. Many teams turned out for the event as well as the three ambassador families in this area, and my family was one of those. This year is the 75th anniversary, so there were 75 ambassador families in the state of Missouri. This year's goal was to raise $36,000 for this area, and with the help of all the teams, they surpassed that goal with just over $36,000. Governor Jay Nixon spent Thursday visiting schools across the state to recognize the districts for their continued academic excellence and announced significant progress toward his goal of giving every student in Missouri the opportunity to earn A-plus scholarships. During his visit, the governor announced that 118 Missouri high schools recently received their A-plus distinction. In January, Nixon set a goal of giving every student in the state the opportunity to earn an A-plus scholarship. With Thursday's announcement, all 520 Missouri high schools that sought the A-plus designation, including 266 since Nixon took office in 2009, have now earned it. And 99% of Missouri's public high school students can now earn scholarships for two years of tuition and fees at one of Missouri's community colleges. There will be a debate amongst the candidates for the 8th Congressional District. It will be at the Shuck Recital Hall at the River Campus in Cape Girardeau on May 28th, starting at 6.30 p.m. Republican State Representative Jason Smith, Democratic State Representative Steve Hodges, Con uh, Constitution Party candidate Doug Inyart, and Bill Slans of the excuse me, Libertarian Party will be participating. Seating is limited, so tickets will be distributed by each candidate. And when we come back, I'll have the latest Missouri State headlines. We'll be right back. When someone comes in a mental area's emergency department, our focus is giving them the best treatment in the quickest manner possible. We track every single patient, sending the doctors information before they even walk in the room. We have dedicated x-ray and CT equipment in our emergency department. We don't have to waste any time running all over the hospital. We know that minutes count in an emergency, and you can count on ER Plus at Mineral Area Regional Medical Center. With extended hours, let the UPS store pack and ship your gifts. Hi, I'm Steve from the UPS store in Farmington, Missouri. Me and my staff would like to wish you and yours a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And welcome back. Transportation officials say that nearly 300 state roads were closed across Missouri because of flooding on Thursday. The Missouri Department of Transportation says that 292 roads had been closed by early Thursday afternoon. Most of the roads that were closed were in the northeast area of the state, but most regions had some closures, including here in southeast Missouri. Missourians are urged not to try and drive through roads covered by water. Well, flash floods are blamed for the death of an 80-year-old motorist south of St. Louis. 
Police in DeSoto say the woman's car was swept Thursday off Highway E into Schrockham Creek. Her body was later recovered in the car downstream from after the flooding subsided. The woman's name has not been released. A St. Louis man has been sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for his beating death for the beating death rather of his two year old son. 32 year old Aaron Lucy was sentenced Thursday. A jury in January found him guilty of first degree murder and four felony counts of child abuse, evidence tampering and armed criminal action. Prosecutors say Lucy beat Kyle Lucy to death in December of 2010, bruising nearly every part of the toddler's body and causing two skull fractures and a fatal brain injury. A Stoutter County woman will serve the next 20 years in prison on murder charges. Angela McCoy of Bernie pleaded guilty to murder charges. She was sentenced to serve 20 years behind bars. Court records indicate McCoy pleaded guilty to class A felony of murder in the second degree, which carries a range of punishment of 10 years to life. The plea is in connection to her role as an accomplice to the death of Aubrey Finch, which prosecutors say was committed by Alan McCoy. When we come back, I'll have your latest storm tracker weather forecast. The weekend's here. How will the weather be? I'll let you know. Come in. Now, here's your Storm Tracker 18 weather forecast with Chief Weathercaster Dustin Kopp. And welcome back. Temperatures right now are on the mild side here in southeast Missouri. 51 degrees here at the studio, and it's mostly sunny. It feels like 51 out there with a the west northwest wind at 11 miles per hour. Temperatures throughout southeast Missouri are in the 50s as well. 54 in St. Genevieve, Fredericktown, the same. 56 in Cape Girardeau and Poplar Bluff right now at 57. As we head through the evening tonight, we do have a frost advisory in effect. That's in effect from 1 a.m. to 8 a.m. tomorrow at or below temperature or normal temps for this time of year. And they're going to stick around for a while, and it looks like sunshine will stick around at least through the weekend. So here's your setup for southeast Missouri. Plenty of sunshine throughout the area. High pressure system over Arkansas giving us that nice weather. Your evening planner, mostly clear skies at 7 p.m., 49 degrees. 9 p.m., clear skies, 45, and we're down to 41 for midnight temperature. But we are going to be on the chilly side. Here's how chilly it's going to get. Temperatures in the 30s. Clear skies. It's going to be a chilly one out there. That's why we're going to see that chance of a frost. We're warming up into the 60s tomorrow. Plenty of sunshine, light to variable winds in the next several days look like this. We will see a partly sunny sky on Saturday, or excuse me, Sunday rather. 65 degrees, 68 and partly sunny on Monday. Then some thunderstorms likely on Tuesday, high of 60. Partly sunny and 55 on Wednesday, 62 on Thursday. And Friday, we're in the mid-60s, partly sunny skies. Looking ahead again at the weekend, we are seeing a temperature around 60 degrees on Saturday for your high, low of 40, mostly sunny, partly sunny and 65 on Sunday. Don't forget, you can get the latest weather information at our website, kdkz18.com. And you can follow me on Twitter at DustinCop underscore KDKZ and like me on Facebook at DustinCop KDKZ. Your health is brought to you by Parkland Health Mart Pharmacy. If you or a loved one has been implanted with a pelvic mesh, commonly called a bladder sling, you may be entitled to a significant cash award. Many women implanted with this device have suffered discomfort, excruciating pain, and even incontinence. The FDA has even warned that pelvic meshes may cause serious injuries, including pain, scarring, infection, incontinence, and discomfort. If you or a loved one has been implanted with a pelvic mesh, call the Rely on Group at 800-796-6986. And when we come back, we'll have Focus on the Family with Dr. Bill Meyer and our movie review of the week. And welcome back. We sometimes pride ourselves on how we embrace diversity, but when it comes right down to it, many of us are uncomfortable with people who are different. In today's Focus on the Family, Dr. Bill Meyer takes a look at this issue and how kids should be taught to respond. When she was born, we had a nurse ask us if uh, we believed in quality of life issues and why we didn't abort her. Those are hard words to hear looking at Carrie Wagaman today. Despite coming into this world with spina bifida, Carrie has packed all kinds of living into her 17 years, even being named one of her hometown's top 100 teens. I just say, wheelchair has nothing to do with it. Just wait till you get to know me and then you can judge me from there. 
Once you get to know Kara, you look right past the wheelchair. She doesn't let anything slow her down, especially on the high school swim team. Because you're actually really racing during practice and stuff because you're trying to get to that level where you want to beat your time. And we always try to focus on the things she could do instead of the things that she couldn't do and tried to help her see that she had a lot of gifts and talents that she could focus on instead of all the things she couldn't do. And that's exactly the right focus when you're the parents of a special needs child. But how do you teach kids to respect each other's differences? They just stand there and stare. And it's because they're little and don't understand. Kids pull together and tease somebody else, but they don't like to be the brunt of that. That is a golden time to move in and say, how could that have been handled differently? The powerful and timeless lesson that kids need to learn at that point is simple. Treat others the way you want to be treated. It doesn't matter what's on the outside, it matters what's in the inside. Gas and brake. <laughs> It's brought many a tear to my eye, just knowing that she can be an overcomer. For Focus on the Family, I'm Dr. Bill Meyer. For more valuable information on life's issues, relationships, and family, visit our website, kdkz18.com, and click on the Focus on the Family link under the Lifestyles menu. Today's plugged-in movie review looks at the new flick, Home Run. Now stepping up, number nine, Corey Brand. In the movie Home Run, Corey Brand is a talented big league baseball player with a drinking problem. What were you drinking on the plane? Surprisingly, he can still slug him out of the park even while under the influence. But outside the batter's box, his life is spiraling out of control. Called out by an umpire on a controversial call, hot-headed Corey loses it. Then comes a DUI. Next thing you know, his agent is doing major damage control. You've been suspended for eight weeks. Was there alcohol involved in the accident? Much to the star athlete's surprise, she tells the press that Corey will be attending a 12-step recovery program in his hometown and that he's agreed to coach Little League there. As Corey coaches, reconnects with an old flame, and reluctantly attends his AA-like program, he has everything he needs to come to grips with his own addiction. But does he want to? This film tackles alcoholism and by extension all addictions. It clearly underscores that addicts can find freedom if they get serious and seek accountability. But it doesn't shy from the fact that it's often easier to fake recovery than to actually experience it. Walk away. That's what you do best, Corey. You had no right. The importance of fathers is also accentuated. That's what I'm talking about. On the downside, very little. One brief incidence of bathroom humor is pretty much it. Though it's still safe to say the film's themes of addiction and recovery aren't for the elementary set. But for teens on up, I'm giving Home Run four and a half grand slams out of five for family friendliness. For an in-depth review on this film or anything else from your local theater, check out PluggedIn.com. Plugging you into the movies, I'm Cheryl Wilhelmy for Focus on the Family's Plugged In Movie Review. For more valuable information on current movies, DVD releases, as well as music, games, and TV shows, please visit our website, kdkz18.com, and click on the PluggedIn.com link under the Lifestyles menu. Coming up here in sports, the Cardinals win it by an inch. The Rams are looking a little bit thin, and two new assistant coaches are added to the Missouri State women's basketball team. Sports is coming up next. Tips to make you money delivered daily. The totally free Money Talks newsletter. Sign up now and get my money makeover video, a $50 value, as my gift. MoneyTalksNews.com Attention, Accutane warning. If you have Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, or inflammatory bowel disease, it may have been caused by the acne drug Accutane. Accutane victims have recently been awarded millions of dollars. Do not delay. There are time deadlines to file a claim. Call the Rely On Group now to be connected with an experienced attorney. There is absolutely no risk on your part. You don't owe us a penny unless we are successful. Call the Rely On Group at 800-698-3105. If you have diabetes and you're on Medicare, call now to get the new talking meter. These new meters are more accurate, they're easier to use, and the best news is you don't have to prick your fingers anymore. Areva makes it simple. They bill Medicare directly. There are no upfront costs. 
and they deliver your supplies right to your door for free. For more information, call one. This is Sports Zone, only on 18 Eyewitness News. Well, it was just inches that made the Cardinals a 4-3 winner over the Phillies on Thursday night. Carlos Beltran's line drive home run in the eighth inning off reliever Mike Adams to break a 3-3 tie barely made it over the left field railing. Yadier Molina lined a two-run double down the right field line in the fourth that landed close enough to the foul line to make replays inconclusive. But with starter Adam Wainwright extending his winning streak and not giving up a walk this season in 29 innings, they hung on to win the opener of the four-game series and remain at least a half game in front of Cincinnati in the National League Central Division. The St. Louis Rams are looking very thin at a couple of different positions, including the wide receiver spot. Currently, the Rams have just three active receivers on their roster, Brian Quick, Chris Givens, and Austin Pettis. General manager Les Snead knows he needs to add more weapons for quarterback Sam Bradford and may look to the draft to solve those issues. And new Missouri State women's basketball coach Kelly Harper filled her two remaining assistant coaching vacancies on Thursday, with former MSU great Jackie Stiles and Jennifer Sullivan set to join her husband John Harper on the sideline this fall. Stiles reportedly interviewed earlier this month for the head coaching job with Drury University women's basketball. Drury is also located in Springfield, Missouri. That's today in sports. Thanks a lot, Aaron. That does it for 18 Eyewitness News. Looking ahead at your forecast for the rest of this evening, mostly clear skies around 7 p.m., temperature around 49 degrees, clear skies at 9:45, and we're down to 41 by midnight. That does it for 18 Eyewitness News. Go to our website, kdkz18.com, for your local news, weather, and sports, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We'll see you back here tonight at 10 o'clock. When you see news happening in your area, let us know about it. You can call our news department at 573-701-9590 or email us at news at dawkinsbroadcastgroup.com. Coming up tonight on KDKZ Channel 18.